Global supply chain shortages have been at the top of most news media for well over a year now. Whether it's GPU prices or car parts, it's kind of getting crazy. But only recently have major manufacturers stepped up and realized that additive manufacturing, otherwise known as 3D printing, can actually help solve this problem. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you like learning about news in the 3D printing industry and how it might impact you, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. As some of the stories come through, we'd like to cover them as we do feel they would be important to all of you. This is actually a pretty cool one. A lot of you know General Motors, you might know the Chevy Tahoe. Well, GM was just forced with a decision. 3D print 60,000 parts or let production grind to a halt on the brand new 2022 Chevy Tahoe. What do you think they chose? Okay, all right, fine. You probably didn't think they would choose 3D printing, but maybe contextual clues of the video. Man, I don't know. They chose 3D printing. But what happened and how did they get to this place? We're taking a look at an article from GM Authority, although 3D natives as well as others have shared it. But apparently this story starts way back in September of 21 when they decided to add a closeout seal to the rear spoiler of the Chevy Tahoe to help streamline airflow and improve the vehicle's fuel efficiency, right? When you're dealing with a chonker like this, yeah, fuel efficiency is gonna be a big deal. And well, was a little bit late in the development of the vehicle to put it into the production line. So what did they do? They were forced with the decision to delay it getting out to customers, or they had to produce two seals per vehicle for a total of 60,000 seals that were set to go into 30,000 vehicles, and they only had six weeks to do it. Traditional manufacturing would not even get close to this, and that's where the value of 3D printing and our sponsor come in. This video, as always, is sponsored by 3D Musketeers. If you have supply chain shortages in your business and you are looking to solve them, you can reach out to the pros at 3D Musketeers. We have over 40 years of combined experience and almost 40 3D printers to help you get your business back on track. Whether you are a food service company that is tired of waiting for prototypes from either companies that don't know what they're doing or your manufacturers that are taking too damn long, or you're an automaker that is looking to deal with a last minute change or somewhere in between for all i care we like helping people give us a call we can help you out we recognize not everybody has these supply chain problems and that is totally fine we understand it it's fair you may not own a business that needs all of this but if you want to support the things that we do here at 3d musketeers you can do so by joining us over on patreon for as low as one dollar a month or by clicking the join button right below me to join the youtube channel member superstars and at the ten dollar tier and higher you get access to our discord server where you can hang out with the rest of the musketeers where we Talk about really cool upcoming projects. If you're not a part of the Discord server, you've been missing out on quite a bit. We recognize that not everyone has a couple of dollars to spend either. That's where a little bit of a like and a subscribe and hey, a share or two definitely helps us go that last mile. But we can absolutely help companies get from where they are to where they need to be. Realistically, we can't control what goes on in the industry and neither can you most likely. So utilizing services like 3D Musketeers will help you get your business back up and rolling where it should be, making you money, rather than you wondering when the hell that boat's coming into port. You know who you are. Anyways, Chevy found them in a situation where it was too late. Six weeks to delivery, they made this last minute change, damn engineers, friggin' penny pinchers, and the like. Y'all know this story. This is one for the birds, if you will. And there was no time to wait. Automakers as it is are dealing with massive supply chain problems with the inability to get vehicles in. That means it's left buyers who want to get a brand new car to go fend for themselves on the used market, which, you know, is terrible. Unless you're people like me that had a car that is now doubled in value. It's now worth $3,000. But that's not good if you're looking to buy a car or you need a car for work. In the past couple of years, I mean, working from home has been a normal thing, but maybe you do want to transition back to an office lifestyle. You're going to need a car. If you didn't have one already, it's going to be tough to get one. GM understood this and a six week delivery date, or they're going to have to push the delivery dates of the vehicles indefinitely 
was not an option. When you're a big company like this and you have clients that can't wait and your buyers are people that can't wait, you have to look what the options are. They actually put out a bid and unfortunately we weren't in that list, but it is what it is. It went to Forecast 3D, also known as GKN Additive, an experienced additive manufacturing firm. From my understanding, these pieces were done with the HP MJF process. It's one of the few processes that could get something like this done in time. GM got quotes from traditional manufacturers of 10 weeks or more, and that is basically putting everybody on hard work, you know, double shifts, working until the cows come home and longer just to get this project done. But with additive manufacturing, they were able to turn around 60,000 pieces in five weeks, allowing GM to get their pieces into the vehicles ready for delivery on time to their end users. We can actually see the raw untreated part up here. And then after some vapor smoothing, which is pretty typical for a thermoplastic polyurethane method in HPMJF, you're able to get a much smoother process that will obviously look real. Now I think I have to go to a Chevy dealer and see if I can find it, but that would also require them to have brand new cars. Supply chain shortages are real. And for those of you that don't feel that pain, you might be living in a bit of a bubble. I mean, let's be real. Prusa just upped the prices on the Mini and the Mark 3S to deal with all these supply chain shortages, rising costs, inflation, and even printed solid just added a couple of bucks onto the cost of all of their spools. I think it was $1 across the board. And while that doesn't necessarily hurt anybody's bottom line on the customer side, these businesses have been sweating trying to find a way through this. And of course, for Prusa, additive manufacturing has always been an answer. And it's what has allowed them to keep reasonable lead times. I know at the height of the pandemic, they were running three month or longer lead times, which is absolutely crazy. But everybody was getting involved to get together and help make PPE. And Prusa was, of course, one of the big companies that answered that call. But now that things are back to normal or whatever normal is going to be, they're seeing lead times of two to three weeks, which is pretty standard in an industry like this. But when you're looking at parts from a traditional manufacturing facility, taking double the amount of time or more that it would take with 3D printing, there's value. And you might say, but Grant, I thought you've said that injection molding is faster. You're right. I have. And it actually still is, as long as the mold already exists. See, the time to cut the mold, to validate it, to verify it, which is a lot of times done with high-end 3D scanning. By the way, get subscribed if you want to see more high-end 3D scanning. We've got a lot of that content coming to the channel very, very soon. But these stories are not unique. In fact, quite a few of our customers are dealing with this exact same issue, that the time that it takes to cut a mold and get a production run made is a lot of times longer than what it would take to get it 3D printed in the first place. If you guys didn't see any of the social media stuff that we put out a little bit ago, we did over 90 hours of printing for a client in literally less than nine hours. And that's kind of ridiculous when you look at what is possible. And if they were going to go the traditional method, if exactly what happened to them would have happened without additive manufacturing, they would have never been able to complete their show. Their parts were held up in customs. There was no way they were getting them in time for their event. 3D printing was the only thing that saved them. And yes, and I'm sure General Motors paid a pretty penny for these, just like that client got charged a rush fee. That's the way that it goes sometimes. But if that rush fee enables you to make a massive delivery of 30,000 vehicles, well, I would say the value's generally right there. Easy to find out. Because if you miss those delivery times, you risk losing orders, both current and future, of people that aren't confident that your company is able to deliver. So where does 3D printing fit in all of this? A lot of people see 3D printing as a part of the manufacturing process. If you're lucky, a lot of manufacturing companies, if they know it exists, they don't care about it. Why? Beats me. Might be the old school thought method. Couldn't tell you. Let me show you something right above me, right here is a Prusa Mini inside of another 3D printer. Yes, it's Printerception. It is as cool as you think it is. But that is currently making some polycarbonate pieces. The reason it's in there is because, well, 
it's polycarbonate. It needs to be in a heated enclosure. And that printer, using the heated bed as a chamber heater, it's actually working out quite well. The client came to us with a pain point that their current manufacturing facility was not able to do it. So we're able to handle it for them. And while it's not a massive order, it's only about 30 pieces, it solves a pain point for them that was going to take months and we had it done. Well, it'll be done before this video even goes live, which is kind of crazy to think about that. We had these pieces for about 72 hours total and we're able to solve a problem that was over 12 week lead time from their major manufacturers. That is the power of additive manufacturing. And I do wish that more companies would allow this technology the chance that it needs to succeed. Because I think if you let 3D printing into your heart and let additive manufacturing into your mind, you will find that it's pretty awesome. And the things that you can do in there go well beyond what you thought could actually ever be possible. And we saw recently that Tesla did the same thing. A video teardown of a Tesla Model Y showed that there's some FDM 3D printed parts, like, you know, off Prusa's. Additive manufacturing solves these problems. And when companies do need to make last minute changes and the supply chain's already been taken care of, you can't just go back into tooling anymore. The world is different. You can't go to manufacturers anymore and say, I need you to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week to get my project done, ignoring everybody else's emergency products. Because the manufacturer is going to go, and what? Their emergency job is less important than yours? How are you going to compensate them for the time they're about to lose and the amount of business they're going to take away from me because of this? Everybody is caught in these chains. And well, that's why... 3D printing solves this problem. It is a solution to a problem, not a long-term solution, mind you, okay? Let's be very clear here. 3D printing for full-on production, it's not necessarily there. Machines like the HP MJF process multi-jet fusion, we talked about that in a previous video, old video, but it still checks out all about materials, is a very fast process. But the machines start at a quarter of a million dollars for the small ones. And that means that the barrier to entry is quite high. In fact, I don't have one here at 3D Musketeers, we have a partner that we work with for that where we get better pricing than retail. Welcome to business. If we look at this video from Munro Live over on YouTube, we'll link to their channel so you guys can check it out. And then, there are actually uh, 3D printed parts. Here, and this looks very different. That's absolutely printed. That is because the, uh, the designer or somebody has found that there was a mistake and what they've done is they've... Um, They've gone and uh, these little ridges are telltale. Those little ridges mean that this has been uh, using um, 3D manufacturing. I absolutely agree here. This was likely a mistake on the part of an engineer. And instead of going back, throwing away all this stock inventory, it made a lot more sense to fire up a print farm and make it happen. Especially when that's FDM, your cost per part for that is going to be pennies assuming you're doing it in-house. But a lot of companies don't have this technology in-house. GM certainly didn't. That's why they reached out to an additive manufacturing facility reasonably close to them to take care of this project. Additive manufacturing seems to be the thing that manufacturers look at to bail them out of a situation they put themselves in because of poor planning. Instead, they should look at it as a means to an end to supply chain problems. We, as people in the 3D printing industry, whether you have a couple of printers or you have a farm like we do, are able to pick up where traditional manufacturing has failed. Whether that's because you can't get stuff into port, your manufacturer's got too long of lead times, or quite frankly, your minimum order quantities are too high and it doesn't make sense. And in the case of this Tesla part right there, that part is very complicated. It would have likely cost a fair bit to get a mold cut for it. When in reality, it makes a lot more sense to just 3D print it and glue it in. With chemicals like 3D Gloop, not sponsored, but good stuff. You should get some. We'll link to it down in the description. You're able to just chemically weld. And that's probably ABS to ABS. Hell, you can do that with acetone if you really wanted. And that makes it relatively homogenous at the end of the day. And yeah, the backside of the part ain't that pretty, but how many people are gonna tear apart a Tesla Model Y? Not this guy. I'd rather drive one. But I want to know your thoughts, right? Have any of you dealt with supply chain issues from local companies or even manufacturers that come to you and said, you could 3D print this, right? And you've maybe had this thought in your head, well, yeah, of course I can print it. 
but can you do it in the amount of time that's needed? I'd love to know your experiences with 3D printing and supply chain down in the comments below. But I think there's a lot of value here. And I think manufacturers are finally opening their eyes to what 3D printing is. 3D printing has unfortunately gotten a lot of bad press. You can look at a lot of videos out there about 3D printing in the news. They're not great stories. And yet stories like this don't make it out because, well... It ain't bleeding, so it ain't leading. But I think there's great value here to show that General Motors, Chevy, Tesla, and other companies are able to think on their feet to provide real-world solutions to real-world problems and not just f***ing excuses to their clients when they could be solving the problems and getting the parts done on time. Speaking of time, that's all I have for you guys today on this one. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to join this elite group of musketeers, you can do so by heading over to patreon.com slash 3D musketeers and joining for as low as $1 a month to help us make content like this every single day. Or you can click the join button right below this video. It's a good button. I promise you'll like it. Right below me will be our video series on the E3D Revo, a phenomenal hot end that's actually rolling right above me inside of another 3D printer to solve a supply chain problem. Yeah, can't talk about it too much. I wish I could. And right next to that is going to be a video that YouTube thinks you should click. You should click them both. We greatly appreciate that. I'll see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.